his role yeah. in Thunder. So um, if there's somebody who can make a draft work when they're the like sole initiation on Pengo and the majority of the lockdown, I think FBZ is the guy you want playing Pengo. Yeah, there's some of those players that like thrive under pressure, right? And there's, there's been so many times I've looked at a draft and thought, hey, they've got no stuns or they've got this one stun, but I I, I, I just have this memory like uh, committed to the back of my brain of of Kuroki being asked in, in, in an interview after after winning a series, and he was asked about his drafts, so how how do they win games with literally no stuns? You know, they're picking their, their IO Venomancers and stuff like that, and he's like, there's more than one way to play Dota 2. You, know, you, you, don't, you don't necessarily need stuns if you've got the macro game or you've got this power spike around BKBs or overwhelming damage in team fight or diving capabilities. There's always ways to make things happen in Dota. You don't necessarily need a ton of stuns. Yeah. It makes, you know, it can make life harder, but they're, like you say, it's not the end all be all of Dota 2 drafting. And if you've got good lanes or good other, like you're, if your draft excels elsewhere, you can make up for it. In. We'll see Boom. I mean, they've got very strong lanes here. Like, that's a lot of the strength they got out of, you know, first pick Undying, six Mango Undying. This safe lane for TP should be secured. Well, Tiger did this exact same move last game. Walks up that high ground staircase. Gets away yet again. Scam and Tims were both waiting for him. It looks like OG going to get the better of this trade, though, with three bounty runes going their way. Yeah, that's a uh, beefy undying just with the early decays and just having all those heroes run at him. So not really a fight that OG wanted to kind of force, but they were more than happy just to secure the runes off of it and we'll see how some of these lanes unravel. Yeah, so there we go. Just that Sunstrike from BZM. Looks like he's going Exor early, trying to secure last hits with a Sunstrike. I think that's where the... The slaughter pick feels nice too. It gives you some like additional kill threat to play around for this Exord Invoker, um, where you've got a Sunstrike setup coming in from the Slardar. The problem is going to be is like, can Slardar play aggressive into Undying TB? Because that's a pretty scary strong lane. Especially with Scam I'm doing this wave dragging. One hit on the Courier kills it off as well. Where's where, where's he heading? He's dragged uh, he this guy. He's, he's trying them, to. I guess. Yeah. I'm not sure. He's yeah, trying like to it. catch up to Tiger, it looks like. I... <laughs> Get back here with my creep wave! Uh, got... Oh, okay. got the range creep. Tiger realizes, needs Ooh, to come back and try and secure it. But Tiger. <laughs> oh, now they waves me. Okay. Um, you know, usually this happens like behind that bottom T1 tower, but this is just a new, you know, the fourth lane of Dota. You got, sometimes you're just going to open, you know, your third eye and suddenly a fourth lane appears. <laughs> Yeah, the jungle lane. There it is. I guess this is what OG have to do, right? Playing double strength into Undying. And it's real nasty stuff. Even just Tiger here getting battered away by Decays. Yeah. We'll get himself some experience, though. As yeah. those creeps will finally die. In the grand scheme of things, like, you're taking away a lane from a TP as well as a Slaughter. And TP needs the farm more than anyone. So, um, you know, yeah, these supports get a bit out of it. Skem's going to be happy about getting some last hits. But um, it's farm being taken away from TP nonetheless. Hey, he's kept a couple of them alive to drag back as well, but yeah, there's, there's four lanes in Dota. We can take a peek into some of the other ones as Yopaj <laughs> has his bottle, gets a water rune, doing uh, yeah, doing decently here against that Invoker. Yep. BZM doing a good job sidestepping some of these stuns, but nonetheless, a lane that currently is being a bit of a, a farm trade, favoring the Invoker up top, Tims and FBZ. Pengalier's like, you know, I think one of the reasons it stopped getting picked and played is laning stage is very weak. Um, I think the good news is you're up against a kind of weak lane as well with the Naga. And then you can often... Oh, Scam. Gets he's it got done. another decay. He may and get Tiger as well. Hey, he's got Solrit back in two seconds and two Mangoes, but it looks like he's just going to okay. give up on it. Oh. Might lose his Courier as well. Unfortunate for Scam there. Even after getting first blood, Tiger gets something back for OG. Yeah, the mango man. He had six mangoes. He's already used five of those six mangoes. So he's just, you know, chewing his way through them. Had another one coming out of the courier, which couldn't quite arrive. But doing it, this is this is your job. You're playing five position Dota. You just do everything you can to trade your resources, your regen for the enemy offlane and supports. Another courier right, right could get sniped. I could do. Wait, Amara level two. 13 denies on Jackie. And with that wave drag, there's so, so much being done by this Terrorblade here to shut down the Slardar early on. Yeah. 
Jump in. Scam? Try and catch Scam with a bash. Has the crush yeah. available as well. Trying to really time this to perfection to get another bash in there. Very okay. well executed by OG. Yep. They saw the TP kind of, you know, elsewhere and they, they get the kill. It's not going to fully swing the tempo back in OG's way. It's not really going to do that at all. If anything, Undying now gets to come back with his boots with full mana, full health and uh, be a whole lot scarier. But it's nice nonetheless. Amar just wants whatever he can get here. Yeah, drag that wave away. Try and get himself to level three. Invoker, 21-7. Starting to get a real handle on this lane with the Exhort. So much damage that Yopans really can't handle. Forge Spirits, Cold Snap. I mean, it's yeah, level five Invoker already. And any kind of rotation is pretty scary as well. If Taiga starts going missing on the map, there's a lot of kill threat into someone like Alestrak. I guess BZM just going to rush the Hand of Midas in this game. Um, yeah, that's why he's got queued up. I mean, whoa, okay. Yeah, no boots, nothing else. Just straight Midas, and he's going to get it at such a good time. Get a lot of early Exalt points. So his, you know, potential damage up on the map, getting the double Forge Spirits going, throwing these Sun Strikes to side lanes is going to be something really hard for Boom to deal with. And this does a lot to kind of secure and guarantee the late game for OG. He's the one who has to kind of answer the TB. And a high level invoker is is great for doing that. I have some real old school stuff. We've we not seen too much of this recently. It's mainly been the Quas Wax. And this, yeah. We, we used to see like the, the Bassy or Ring of Aquila into Hand of Midas invoker from the mid lane quite often. Right now, just the stick, the mantle. That's gonna really, really be nicely you know, timing things up together with the with the Naga as well. Once you've got your points up on Invoker, you've got this ability to song, ice path, and get those invoker spells down onto people. We haven't seen too much from it. I don't think we will see too much action. Is that top lane where, yeah, Naga just doing what she can to farm, get the jungle to him because, yeah, as mentioned, Pengalier, not the strongest laner. He's just looking for his level six. There's not a whole lot that can happen there. But down bottom, the aggression continues. Here's the sun strike. It's going to be off the mark. Skem still going to go down here, though. This is the the kill lane. Like, even though you can get destroyed in lane, Slaughter and Marcy still have that constant kill threat. Yeah, just break down the lane, roam into the jungle. And Marcy now off the map. Oh, Leshrac, very low on the mana and kind of wants this six-minute rune. Not going to happen. Gets the bottle round. refill, though. Skim, making value out of his death, even. Tiger's still lurking, though. Looking okay. for the jump in with a rebound. Catching out Yopage. There's a lot of damage out of the Pulse Nova and a good stun there. Comes in with a decaying soul rip from Skim. Kill off the aggression from OG, but a turn from BZM. Cold snap, sun strike, dodged by Yopaj yet again. So many little moves here. Both mid players pirouetting around to dodge these skill shots out of Split Earth and Sun Strike. Yeah. Great recognition from Yopaj. I could just straight up kill Tiger there. Um, the Soul Rip kill secure, I think, maybe even needed because he was hasted, but really well done. And they're doing all this while TB's free farming. Um, so things are looking pretty good for them, although this Invoker has just been absolute heaven in this mid lane complete uncontested free farm minus up before seven minutes and bzm is having a dream game yes perfection sun strike. sun strike bottom focusing tb oh we got but thunder comes from jackie and bzm's nice. dying in the mid lane in the meantime invoker gone tiger destroyed by jackie's turnaround and skem chasing into amara as well three gone and skem gets a double kill yeah didn't see what happened mid it looks like he just kind of ran him down and maybe had some help from from tims yeah tims used his spell so a uh, good rotation from tims but down bottom tp getting the early point in sundra i guess he held on to a skill point there had the stick charges we'll see it again here I, and a great job i think just standing his ground and letting the sun strike be like sp split between himself his illusions and even like a creeper or two so jackie just understanding that this if i get hit by a sun strike here i need to not take the full damage yeah that, that soul rip came right on time as well allowing for the sunder a scam in the right place and yeah mid lane it was you know, literally just lesh lesh coming back into mid getting cookied onto the invoker and uh yeah bzm not too much to answer with because he doesn't have the point in wax yet so there's no tornado no uh ghost walk to disengage he's gone all out raw damage yeah that's the kind of invoker you definitely want to be ganking and making plays around and they're not done here they're still camping mid with both supports they really want to kind of collapse on bzm again yeah but tim's oh tiger decides to jump onto 
And so your part instead, and now he's the one in danger, getting run at under his tier one. FBZ arriving, thinking about the jump forward with his rolling thunder. BZM and Misha trying to disengage from this, but the Jakiro, even with the raindrop, is going to get hunted back behind his tier two tower. Yopaj and Tims, they've got another scatter blast if they need it, which it doesn't look like they do. A double for the ledge. The reward here for Boom. Just great aggression, understanding there's no readiness from OG to take a fight, and that these four heroes can win any team fight mid, can take potentially the T1 mid tower, all while creating room for the TB to continue feed farming. Amari's just not ready to join these fights as a slaughter. Like, you don't want to fight into Lesha. You're just you know, running into a meat grinder of damage there. Uh, and even with the Mask of Madness, I don't think Amara's going to suddenly have, be able to kind of make these counterplays. Uh, it's just a tough game for him and Pengo plus Leshrac are just in a position where they're so strong in any kind of early teamfight here. Yeah, incredibly so. Yeah, the Mask of Madness is probably more of a farming tool for Amara than a fighting one. Raggy, rotate into the jungle there. No, he's fine. But Yopash found a big stack and is getting nice and fat on his Leshrac. Yeah, closing in on that Yule Scepter. What's Naga got? Nearly the Yasha after Treads. It was top of the net worth a second ago, but Lesh has overtaken her. Yeah, it looked like Yuragi tried to make a move to like steal the stacks, but Lesh had already farmed it. Meanwhile, Bottom River Tiger, well, yeah. seen this one a few <laughs> times. He does get the Invis rune, but. Uh, boom! Yeah. They just land one stun. You know, I, I was a bit worried about them really only having the cookie. This split earth comboed up with that has been you know, really beautifully executed by them. Yeah, every hero that shows. Like picking less dragon than Marcy, it just feels like you pick this hero that doesn't care about getting jumped on by the Marcy rebound and an entire draft. Like less track is more than happy to get initiated on. Z top, Yuragi sleeps here, but they've still Sounds got the. Okay, Kiss will get cancelled. Yeah, Still has a rolling thunder, TV. he needs to hit him. Oh, he got him just it's barely Yuragi on the edge. Well. They do kill off Ooh. Yuragi, is down bottom. Tiger dead, Jackie's still alive. Scraping away when Amar gets the bash okay. he needed. Turns back onto Skem now as the Undying. Oh, the TB Illusions, they're doing a good job, but this corrosive haze and the physical damage from the Slardar is enough to get a double for him. It's so TB lose. time. <laughs> what? Yeah, the Mask of Madness. Getting all those max out bash, he's just, he's online. Any, anybody who wants to fight against him, like, you need to bring some serious burst damage because any drawn out skirmish against Slardar is going to go heavily in Amara's way. And he's he's online now. It took him some time to catch up, but he's he's got there. Actually, like, identical timing on both side lanes as well, with both carries being gone on. Both teams looking for exactly the same thing. Shut down these illusion carries to limit their farm. That's going to be OG. Trying to trade out towers now, though, as tier one top has already died on their side. And they've drawn the line across that bottom jungle. Uh, Observer what expires, but they do connect with a scan, which will reveal the position of a couple of boom heroes. It's important for boom to, I think, play very cohesively as a team and make moves where they're not getting like punished elsewhere on the map because that's kind of what happened there and the, like you know they make a good move around the mid and the top part of the map uh you know they're getting some good farm in their less track but tb getting picked off down bottom is just something they can't really afford to have happen and their, their draft has you know not too much room for herring they need to kind of similar to the first game have this kind of snowball going oh fbz god using his rolling thunder and blink to kill off misha it does mean they won't have it for another 70 seconds, and Amar quickly dispatches with the Undying, so the one-for-one -one trade there. Probably going to favor OG just because of the window that they have now without that big teamfight ulti of Boom being available. This is classic FBZ Pengo. Loves to rush the Blink Dagger. Just some arcane boots to give him the, the farming he needs, but making sure he can just play as the initiator for his team. Has the shard queued up so that he can, he can rely on the roll-up to like get out of things like Cold Snap and... Your punch. It's gonna be a nice kill. Great two man stun. And Ooh. in comes FBZ with a swash and the crash back in towards OG. And they walked up that staircase expecting it to be a you know, free path into the jungle and they met with Boom's reaction. Just perfect synergy of spells there. Chain stunning everything, the cookie to kind of round out the stuns at the end. And not much you can do there if you're, you're OG when you get jumped on. They need some BKBs playing into this Leshrac Snapfire. BKB timing is going to be scary. You can see even heroes like Invoker, he's got one queued up. 
Midas bots into BKB. And once Sardar and Voker have their BKBs, these team fights get a lot more tricky for Boom. So Boom want to get as much done as possible during this kind of five minute window. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see another couple of smokes in a row. Like Tim's right now with kisses off cooldown. He's desperately itching to get involved in team fights. Just needs a hero to pair up with, which should usually be Yopage, maybe FBZ now rolling thunders off cooldown. We'll see where they head. Kill off that Naga illusion. <laughs> Top rune illusion, not the best. No, not what Yopage was hoping for, but I, I guess it's it's not awful against Corrosive Haze and Cold Snap, though, right? Yeah, has some potential uses. We'll see if we get a chance to make a play around it for Yopage, but for now, he's kind of just farming out the mid lane. It looks like, for now, at least, Boom looking to, to slow this down. I, I do kind of agree with what you said, where it does feel like they want to use up some of these smokes fairly early on and make these moves now with any time they have got rolling thunder with blink dagger like just just make a play and they smoke up out of the dire observer ward range three heroes it's the same trio and once again looking to hunt down amar but misha's in a pretty good spot to pop this one look at those kisses launched preemptively yeah. amar's out of there it looks like misha might be able to slip away as well Yopaj and, and here come OG. And considering chasing, but the song from Nagasara and trying to catch up to the Pango, he's just out of range. Oh, oh they can't it's quite find him. FBZ has Blink Dagger ready. Scam's got a Tombstone, but I don't think Boom want to fight this without the Rolling Thunder. This very awkward situation. Like the, they see Misha, but that's not who they're smoking for. Like they were, FBZ was dead set on catching Amar, but level four sprint, he was able to just outrun him and. OG recognizing Boom had kind of overcommitted and weren't going to kill anyone. We're like, oh, sweet, this is our fight now. But similarly, Boom also managed to get out. So bit of game, game of cat and mouse from both sides. All right, kind of nice that Naga was already in position. So she actually was able to TP top to push out that wave. While Invoker with his boots of travel, he's able to be anywhere on the map, really. Any given moment. So OG, very good at reacting around TP that trouble reset top. button. Jackie, Jackie. yeah. Hey, Sunder's Here back onto Yur Yuragi. Tiger trying to kill off the tombstone. Gets off the unleash. Okay. I can't chase any further, though. Down bottom, meanwhile. Amar chasing for Yopaj. <laughs> well, that's right. Not able to land a stun just yet. Yule's on cooldown as well. Means no great form of initiation from them. Misha a bit worse for wear as FBZ. Hey, rolling in towards Amar, they really want to kill him off, but a great ice path stops Lash in his tracks. Oh, a lot of damage from Yopash, though, will burn through the Slardar while FBZ claims the life of the Jakiro. And now the tier one tower being taken down slowly, but surely the Sunstrike lands. Not enough damage to kill off the Lash, though. Yeah. Good roll in from FBZ. He rolled in without using the blink so that after he got the first stun, he could blink back and stun. Slaughter a second time. He kind of ignored the Jakiro, at least, knowing that that was going to be an easy kill. So, good job by Boom. Couple of kills and the tower to follow it up. They've taken all these tier one towers now, as you'd like to see with any kind of a Leshrac draft, and they continue to push forward here. The Blood Soul from Leshrac, not far off. That's going to give them a pretty good timing where TB may have his Manta style as well, and they can, you know, start eyeballing Roshan or at least any kind of aggressive fight on the map. Yeah, they got Snap having Mech delivered in a short while as well. Tons of ways to, to fight around this tombstone. And that rolling thunder. No real vision to speak of, though, in this top jungle. They do get this high ground observer ward now to try and scout out where Yuragi's been farming. But the Nagasaran has already evacuated that northern side of the map. Just leaving Tiger up there to maybe try and cut a wave or two. And Marcy slips in behind them, and boom, position themselves to, to defend the Roche Pit, cut out this mid-wave. Make sure OG is shoved off to the right-hand side in the bottom right-hand corner. They've kind of got to constantly address the Naga slip push. Her illusions are being sent to multiple lanes. She's always playing away from enemy heroes in the end. You know, wherever Boom or not, she's going to the other side of the map, farming out the jungle and two lanes at once. Like right now, her illusions are cutting both mid wave and bottom wave. Just great job by Yuragi to get as much farm on the map as possible. And it also just delays any kind of a push. Like Boom's just going to be like, oh, let's go push mid. Oh, wait, we don't have a creep wave. Uh, so very annoying stuff and it's going to make OG really drag this game out to a point where you know they can finish these BKBs that are oh so important 
Hawks. And also they're just, again, they're down on kills pretty bad, but they're keeping it close with the gold. And it doesn't feel like they are too afraid of that Roshan. And he just being taken as all oh, Amar. They cancelled his own TP there, knowing the Yules was coming. Still too much damage to withstand, though, as up in the top lane, they burst through Jackie at the same time, wow. finding the TB kill. And he wasn't the one with Aegis. Yeah, they gave it to the Lestrak because they want to make maybe some kind of aggressive plays and try to take these tier two towers with Edict. But just meant Jackie has to be that much more careful with where he's farming. And he can't afford to go down. That's a huge find. Like, the slaughter is a nice skill for, for Boom, and it, like, helps them progress, but TP going down is, like, the, the worst thing that could happen right now for Boom. And it feels like so many times in this game, there's multiple plays being made at the, the exact same time. You know, I'm watching Slaughter getting picked off by two members of Boom while you know, they're losing Jackie top, and you've, you've, got, you've got to wonder, should they have been top covering him? Should Jackie have run away from that top lane a little sooner? Seems to be a little disconnect with Boom after taking this Aegis, which was a, a similar thread in the storyline of game one. And also, just kind of hats off to OG, recognizing with the info they get, using this Naga illusions to scout and push out waves, they understood that he was alone and that they could easily find and get that kill. And Yuragi gets caught here. Doesn't look like Yopai's just gonna be able to get on top of him. And there's always that get out of jail free card in the Song of the Siren if Yuragi does feel like he's in any danger. But similar story, like he finds like himself farming out top and then the entire boom team comes this way. He's like, okay, I'm gonna TP bottom, farm out the entire bottom jungle, farm out bottom lane and also push out the mid lane using illusions as well, I imagine. Well, FBZ spent his thunder here to try and find Tiger. Even putting the tombstone on the ground, kill off this Marcy. But finally take her down. So 30 seconds without Tiger now. As OG, they're going to try and push out the bottom of the mid waves, leaving Boom to open up on the tier two. Yeah, not the biggest kill, but this tier two tower is what they ideally wanted to get a minute ago. But when TB got picked off, it slowed things down. But this will give him that dire outpost control. And it, it doesn't feel like an Aegis where I mean, maybe Boom consider going high ground here. They've still got Metamorphosis, but I think TB without BKB is just too exposed. Well, oh, rainbow of TPs into mid. Yeah. Stun onto the Slaughter, but they've got the disengage from BZM. Hannah's four points up in the wax now, so Tornado is a, a pretty decent tool, just holding back Boom and getting Slaughter out of there. And then, I mean, God, you look at the minimap and you see these little green markers <laughs> everywhere. Naga yeah. Illusions oh, spreading out and cutting waves, being a nuisance. Even the real Naga's, like, in pretty deep here. Goes for an Orchid, which is kind of interesting, because it's like, this is like the fighting killing Naga build. It doesn't feel like OG are quite ready to fight, but they must feel like they can take a fight around this. Maybe this age is expiring and with the BKBs, they're definitely strong here. So it's a, you know, a different, a look that, you know, we've seen the Orchid on Naga before. It's like, but kind of become almost like a standard Naga build, but getting it in a game where it feels like they're split pushing is a bit unexpected. Yeah, also kind of cool that Naga is nearby the creep wave she's killing. Or something we usually see as Tim's been caught out by a, a naked ice path of the Jakiro. Oh, this kill could turn into a little bit more here. Skem spent his tombstone, Tiger's in on top of him. Yopanj caught out with this cold snap tornado, Bastion oh, stunned up, but FPZ with a counter initiation. Aegis is down, Skem being blown up, has to get the mech heal and saw it back up, but he's gonna fall quickly. The turnaround on the Tiger though, with his TB metamorphosis coming back onto the Naga Siren, she's gonna mount a song, no she's not. Killed off before she can get her spell out. And the kisses giving you that suppressing fire to force OG to fall back again. Jackie and FBZ. They aren't done quite just yet though. Diving tier two for a triple kill on Jackie. Yeah, they can't keep Jackie down and he manages to make sure the fight ultimately swings mostly in Boom's favor there. At the same time, losing the less track, it was a buyback on Snapfire. It wasn't a convincing team fight at all you can see how squishy this less track is on the front lines as we replay the fight they lose tim's to start off he's the one who buys back pretty shortly after but let track with an agent just felt like food for them the minus armor from the corrosive haze plus all the damage coming in from the rest of the og draft just destroyed yopaj yeah i mean invoker with alacrity he's doing you know, 200 damage a pop 300 even and he's got his uh maxed out exhort put up as well 
It was a perfect place for FBZ's Pengo, like being near that wall where it could just kind of bounce back and forth, stunning a couple of heroes, even caught some of the cores towards the end of the fight as their BKBs were wearing off, so... Still a good fight for Boom, and it does feel like this game is shaky, shaping up to a point where like, we're going to need to see this TB do some real heavy lifting, much like last game, because like Leshrac looked like food that fight. I, I'm, I'm surprised Lesh isn't going for some kind of an armor item. Has a BKB queued up after this Kaya, but it does feel like at least a casual plate mail is going to be essential for Yopaj. Yeah, with, with all that physical damage, a minus armor, it absolutely does. Well, we also saw how squishy and how much of a problem it can be for Naga, the fact that she's not a BKB carrier. Getting clipped by yeah. you know, the, the Pango stuns, Lesh stuns, magic damage out of Tim's with the kisses. You know, Yuragi does have to be a little bit careful if, if he plays too far forward without being able to get the song off. Because there's no real save here outside of like a dispose. Yeah, and not something that they can necessarily rely on. There's bottom lane, Amar. They're trying to force out this BKB, but he's not going to take the bait initially. The Rolling oh. Thunder doesn't clip him, and he's out of there holding his BKB. Oh, the Composure. I mean, one Tiger at the very least, but yeah, very well done by Amar to blink away from that. Yeah. Having the understanding that he could escape it without BKBing and well, lose the tier 2 tower bottom though. So boom, even without an Aegis, is still the ones on the front foot applying pressure. And they're on less of a timer compared to last game. Last game it was like, okay, how do they out carry these three cores? They've only got a PL and, you know, the PL isn't having the best time this time around. TB less track, it does feel like they're on par with OG's draft when it comes to late game Dota. Yeah, yeah. Once, once you get to 40 minutes, it doesn't feel like that kind of foregone conclusion. Yeah. Much, much stronger position here for them. So much is going to come down to, to execution, above all. Um, but, and then you've got you've got answers to TP in the form of the Invoker, but I think similarly, Boom have answers to the Naga in the form of the Lash Track. If, you know, if they can get on top of the Invoker with the Pengo, you know, Invoker is going to die very quickly. Um, if TB gets like some kind of BKB blink build, you can just kind of blink in on top. I'm a little surprised to see Jackie not prioritizing BKB, but he is uh, a killing machine with this like all stat slash damage build that he's going for. Oh, another thunder onto the Marcy. And there's the Scardy damage coming in from Jackie Boy. We've seen Kill this one off Tiger. a few times before. Tiger with nine deaths, but it's kind of been his role and his job this game. So the tactical feeding continues. Yeah, I, I guess this build on TB, you know, looking at this Nagasar and he, he needs these illusions to be pushing out waves and making sure that Naga isn't getting yeah. free reign of the map. It does make a lot of sense. So, yep. so far, OG with the bots on Invoker, Naga pushing waves. They've they've managed to keep you know, both side lanes across the river and constantly forcing Boom just to come back and maintain them. Pyce is invis and he's found BZM. Oh, that's big. And FBZ's on top of him as well. B oh, BKB wand. Can he blink away with a ghost walk? Tries to slip out Ooh. into the tree line. He's in the form. He's blink out. is ready. Oh, Yopar's not going to land the start. And FBZ misses the swash as well. That was close. Yeah, they just didn't have the rolling thunder. I don't know if FBZ, maybe his shield crash was on cooldown too. I didn't quite click him in time, but yeah, just not quite enough damage to finish off the invoker there. That would have been such a nice find. And... You can see when it comes to like the farm right now, like Boomer up 5k ish gold and they're just getting out farm. Naga able to split the entire map and finds FBZ mid, but the roll up helps bail him out with the Lotus Orb. Mm, Yuragi does still have this song to play with. FBZ committing onto Naga. Good four staff away by Misha, but that cookie in aggressively. Yopaj maybe overstepping here. TB arriving with a oh, big no, reflection and Marcy shredded. Down goes Tiger yet again, while BZM and Amar, they do open up other Tims to kill the snap. Forcing back Lash with a meat ball to zone away the rest of Boom. Both teams looking for the weaknesses in that aggressive line, losing their position fours, but feels like OG still in a position here to press forward onto tier one. Yeah. Something Amar so good is like, he, fi he finds a way to run in and kill a support without even having to commit BKB, because he knew Boom used all their spells like around the less track and to, to kill off like the Marcy there. So able to get in and out and still have a BKB to play around. So OG want to re-engage here. Naga have a, a completed Heart of Tarrasque. There's just not a whole lot Boom can do to defend this one. And this not is until the, they have Rolling Thunder. This is the, the, the real test now for Boom. Oh, Amar, oh, oh. with a Sunstrike on, good Yul Scepter. 
Nice time for Yopaj, but it's just an onslaught of physical damage that comes afterwards. Naga Slada straight in towards FBZ, but he's swashed back to low ground. And I, th I think you're right, gods. A uh, plate mail is uh, something here for Lashrak is desperately yeah. needed. Oh, for sure. I mean, there was so much damage there. Like, I, he needs the plate mail, but at the same time, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if it saves him a lot of these times, but you got to itemize for, you know, to deal with your opponent's strengths, I feel like. Oh, even with Lash dead, boom, smoke yeah. up. Are they worried about Roshan here? Maybe they just don't see heroes here. They, no one's in Rosh. They're going for a kill on mid. This yeah, is a Naga Roche kill. To Naga. That's huge. I, I right, think Naga just saw that. Yeah, he just saw Lash dead and he's like, okay, I can do whatever right now. But right into Roshan with Metamorphosis. This is a fantastic move from Boom. What a play from them, and they're going to get themselves a free, uncontested Roshan, which is great for Leshrac, because this Leshrac desperately needs ages. Like, oh, maybe they give it a TB. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, it does look like Jackie is pushing forward, so... Maybe oh, they just saw what happened last time with an Aegis on Lesh, where he just dies twice super fast, and TB's ready to kind of play this frontline push and carry now, so... All right. I just love those kind of moves, you know, teams smoking up to fight into Aegis or teams with a, a hero or two down smoking up to, to get that little advantage playing the mind games with your opponents. Because like, like you said, Naga's feeling pretty fearless there, feels unkillable. And boom, knowing that, exploit. Uh, you're unaware, Naga Sauron in the middle lane. Get themselves Aegis on TB. Meta down for 80 Aegis seconds, so still not too bad for OG to keep split pushing. And try and force fights away from their base, which which is something they're so good at. And that map control yeah. playing opposite side of the map. Right, BZ's here to try and hunt him down, but BZM is already out. And that's the thing. He's the only real reliable catch of sorts. Tiger? Oh, the blind sun. Yopaj gets him in the trees down bottom. He was How trying to TP know? out. Maybe he just had a sixth sense or possibly saw something. I'm not entirely sure what Mid radiant vision looked like. I'm in on to the snap. And Jackie... Trying to get away with his demon zeal. Popped his BKB early on to disengage from OG. That's the thing, you show Pengo bottom and then all of a sudden OG know it's safe to force a fight mid. Take it while the Pengo's away. And then the line's drawn again. Playing keep away with Boom right now. Don't let them reach the base. Don't let them get high ground. Keep killing off a hero here. Like any trade is pretty good for OG as long as it's... Uh, like for like, as Amar, FBZ quick on the blink. Has the Basher completed now. Also an A on disc queued up. FBZ, ton of utility items for the team. BZM does have this Scythe of Ice now though, so if Invoke is able to blink hex someone, they can die in a blink of an eye. You have to be ready with the counterplays and protecting your teammates. Well, FBZ... He catches Yuragi, then Yuragi catches him, and now Jackie's here Catching to try. Him. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like FBZ gonna, gonna roll in and run away. Yes. Cause a bit of chaos. Should be a full disengage from Boom. A jump back in? Whoa. He gets the crash onto Invoker, but now the turnaround back onto the TB. Have they got the chain locked down with the Hex? He's stunned and caught the Manta, not enough. Aegis claimed, but he does have the BKB once he respawns. Kiss is launched in, covering fire from the Snapfire as Yuragi. Slows things nice down, path. aiming for the Terror Blade. He does have BKB Sunder though to come out of this one. Sun Strike of the Bashes from Amar. Catching out Jackie, trying to focus down the Terror Blade, but Yuragi and Tiger on the run back as Yopaj unleashes Sunder. hell on them. They've Can't got get it off. again, but the heals, Tims and Skem, keeping Jackie in fighting shape while Yopaj just keeps on hounding this Invoker. A bash in with a swashbuckled Rep Z finds the kill on him. Oh. OG just getting a little bit too big for their britches. They're trying to force the TB kill and or even taking a fight. Like, they knew TB didn't have metamorphosis. He was respawning out of Aegis, but there was just enough firepower coming in from Yopaj, who most of these fights gets prioritized and focused out of. This was the first fight where Yopaj had free reign because everything had been thrown at the TB. We'll see it again here. They came so close to killing him a second time. That was the first death, but because of all these spells being used, it's just... You know, it's a free team fight for Lesher. And they're going high ground. They're looking to get a lane of Rax here, as you'll see in the, the bottom right corner. Ah, back to live. Tier 3 down. 
Buildings falling quickly as Yopage gets out his Diabolic Edict, but OG have a glyph. Spelling out Ice Path after Ice Path. They need 20 more seconds for BZM to respawn, and it looks like they're just going to give up this lane. Another Creep Wave will arrive and allow Boom to unlock that first lane of Barracks. Yeah, don't think Boom are interested in forcing the mid lane quite yet. They're going to disengage together. They've got... Most of their spells back up. The Rolling Thunder's come up. Metamorphosis is in 40 seconds, so they could be ready for another team fight fairly soon. They've got such good vision around this top part of the map. Multiple Observer Wards in this dire jungle, so they'd love to find a way to take another fight, but at the same time, maybe they're going to be eyeballing off the lane equilibrium. They need to push out these lanes. Bottom lane, mid lane. Naga doing a really good job of repelling Boom just by pressuring these lanes. Excellent. Like, even though Roshan is, is minimum three minutes away, you, you're still looking that far ahead to be able to push out these lanes, get them across the river to set up for three minutes time, even now. And OG, you can have Bloodthorn on the Naga Siren. They smoke up and they see some of these. This is where the vision, they have triple observer ward. It may just be Tiger they find. Death number 13 incoming. Yeah. FBZ. Good connection. Gonna get stuck here on the ramp though. But with Yopage's arrival, they've got chain stuns for days. A bit unfortunate, but Yopage recognizing he needed to Yules to stop any kind of rebound escape and you now prioritizing this mid lane. There is a radiant creep wave here, but be going high ground without an Aegis here, but this TP is mighty strong, but doesn't seem like Boom can go for any kind of push here. They're playing. The game where they just want to hunt down these heroes here. They see like Invoke Ford Spirits mid, these Naga illusions. They need to find the real heroes. And the problem is the the so-called phantom push, the illusions, the summons just make it so hard to make any play on the map when you can't actually see real heroes that you want to go for kills on. Yeah, it's like this is a good place for Boom to be in in a normal game. Play enemy ancients, you farm ancients, get neutral items, you you kinda of have this split push between bot and mid. But <laughs> you don't have any of your own creep waves coming, and Leshrag, self Yules, and the BKB as the Song of the Siren from your not going to work out here for him. Yopage, nice all the Manta Dodge on the stun. Going to get him away from the no bash. No bash. Oh. FPZ doesn't get the RNG luck he needed. Oh, he, that was so good from, from Leshrag. BKB being the song, buying time. Naga can't TP until that split earth has been used. And the reason Yopaz goes for it is he knows his teammates are cl probably, like, you know, just close enough to maybe cancel a TP, but FBZ couldn't get close enough for Rolling Thunder and unfortunately didn't get the bash RNG. Invisibility. Super unfortunate for them, but they're still ready to go again. Smoke this five, pinging out where BZM and Misha are. Cookie forward onto Jackie will claim the life of the Jakiro here. A simple and swift kill. BZ almost found some plus ones there, but oh. here come OG, they want to go in. Lamar. They've nearly blown up FBZ for the double full staff, the crit, it finally takes him down. Dead for 80 seconds, stole it from Skem, gets him out, the tombstone already dropped. Oh, Amar just going to PKB TP home, he's safe. There's nothing to stop him whatsoever. Yep. The AC just giving him that extra bit of survivability against the TB now and making life hard for the Boom who are so reliant on this Pengo to set up kills for the TB and for everyone. Second he goes down, there's not really a whole lot Boom can do. They're just going to get kited and outmaneuvered in any kind of a team fight. As both teams are going to start eyeballing off Roshan fairly soon. Sometime yeah. in the next three minutes, it's going to be respawning and Dire Scan does clip onto them. Still 30 seconds without Pengo, and that's why OG have made this smoke move. Tiger leading the charge, trying to desperately find anybody, but Boom seem to be aware of this. They've completely vacated their Ancients area, just leaving TB illusions. More than happy to kind of give up that Roche area of the map for now, but they're going to need to make an aggressive move out. They don't know the Roche timer for all they know. Roche, okay, they just scout Roche and now they know OG's not in there, so they buy that little bit of breathing room. Yeah, this is where the, the eyes in the hills really become incredibly important. These high ground observer ward spots, which OG currently have two of. I did notice though that Snapfire pinged out the one closer to their ancients and both teams have gems. Vitally important to keep that team fight vision going when you need the initiations to be spot on from heroes like FBZ and Amar on this Pango and Slardar. 
An arcane rune bottom for Yopage as well. That's a big one for Boom. Yeah, he's happy about Radiant that. An Aeon Disc Pango just means they can play a little bit more aggressive with SPZ in the front lines. Doesn't have to quite worry as much about some of those initiations onto himself. And I'll stog it. Getting rid of that vision. Now it feels like Boom, the ones with the advantage. Taking that spot on the map just in front of Roshan. Well, OG playing into darkness right now. Yeah, Boom just feels like in some ways such a similar game to last. The big key difference being that Boom have drafted and just prepared themselves better to actually go late game. Recognizing like maybe early on that with OG, you know, picking the Naga that they're just looking to stall it out again. Boom's like, okay, we'll get TP. You know, we'll, we'll match you. And they put themselves in this position where they're making all the plays, controlling the map, but then also scaling at the same time. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a little surprised the BZM's not going for the Aghanim Scepter here, having having Slard Ajakiro and yeah. the, the Song of the Siren to set up for Cataclysm. Opting Just... to go for the Octarine Core rather than that. Yeah, the cooldowns and lot for a long draw now fights will be nice and all, but it does feel like a, at least at some point it's going to be eyeing off an Aghanim Scepter, at least maybe as his next item. Yeah. The Timeless Relic is a dream item as well with all that amped up spell damage too. Oh, it's huge. I mean, debuff duration as well. Real handy on the Invoker. As Roshan, he's up. Mm -hmm. He's got an Aghanim Scepter on him. So maybe that's what the Invoker is looking for. Try and take this <laughs> Rosh for themselves and just get a free yep. Ags. Why, why buy Ags when Rosh give free Ags? <laughs> Simple solution. Man, oh gee. They still have that high ground ward. Tim's... He, he knew it was there for a while, so he gets rid of it very quickly. OG of smoke. Leshrak is TPing a little bit split up here. Yopaj oh, may Yopage. get caught alone. He's smoke. Oh, Yopaj. The Hex. Oh. They get the immediate initiation. Yopaj getting blown up. He does have buyback. But boom, in an awkward spot now. Tornado EMP going to clip onto the TB. Ice Wall's going to slow him down to a crawl as he manters out of the ensnare of the Naga. But, you, oh, Yuragi going to song up to high ground here. They're trying to get the backstab in onto the Undying and the Snapfire, where Amar, with their side device out of BZM, blow up Skem. Now the catch onto the Snap. So quickly done. Jackie trying to turn onto Yuragi, but the tanky Naga gets himself away. While Tiger's being given, he allows the disengage. A Sun Strike onto Jackie. Amar turning with the bashes. In comes the Deafening Glass. Last of the Hex again! OG have destroyed them! And yeah. Executed, outplayed, and annihilated around the pit! OG will dominate Boom here and take Roshan for themselves! Just... I mean, they, they lost their ward, but they kind of had all the info they needed to know, and I think they still knew that Yopa just maybe linger on that bottom lane. He unfortunately TP'd into that tier 2 top tower, got caught alone, and then even though he has buyback, he can't TP out, so he didn't actually buy back until super late because he's thinking like, I, I buy back, I have to walk to this fight. Like, that's the other big issue. Like, your buyback isn't worth as much when your TP's on cooldown. So OG just, you know, a bit of luck in some ways that they catch Yopage alone there, but also a bit of a misplay from Yopage to be going there alone when they could smoke in. And OG get rewarded for their boldness going for the smoke play. And this game just flips on its head. <laughs> yeah, yet again. I mean, who, who did they even give the Ags to? Oh, Naga, Naga has it, I guess? Uh, it looks like it, yeah. Okay. Now we're going to have that uh, improved and snare and the reel in. Pretty good against Magic Community. Oh, OG. Going for it. Multiple lanes pushing both mid and bottom in. They're not pushing all that fast, though, and boom, are respawning. Yeah, there. Yeah. Nearly in position here with FPZ coming back alive to defend their high ground. Two tier threes did drop though, and that's an, an ideal situation for a Naga lineup. Keep that split push going and allow the creeps to do the dirty work. This game is still far like, from over, but Boom cannot afford to make mistakes like that. It's like these final hurdles, Boom just can't get over them. And the, the, the first couple of hundred meters, perfectly fine, everything's going well for them. Yeah. And just a it, few slip ups. As far as like the team fight, I, I like the adjustment. The previous team fight they lost, they like used this song plus ice path towards TP, and then you know he just BKBs the ice path and wins the fight. They did the same thing, but they ignored the TP and TP BKB the ice path, but he didn't need to. He was he was fine. He was being ignored. So just great heads up play from OG to kind of realize that this TP 
shouldn't be the number one priority at the start of a fight. They should kite him, but they shouldn't throw all their spells on top of him. And boom with this ever-present threat of the Nagasara. I need to deal with bottom lane, I need to push out mid, but they also need to stay as five together. Oh, BZM is going to get spotted out for a sec there, but in the invis, FBZ has no reveal, so can't get the catch on the invoker in the end. Uh, BZM going just toying with Boom at this point, forcing them all back into their base, while the rest of his team, they're smoked up and invading Ancients. Loved it. Find a catch on anyone here. Always have those sun strikes that can be flowing in as well, but you know, OG, they're hunting. The Mars Slider getting fatter and fatter with an MKB. And he's the Aegis carrier who's gonna be just blinking in and starting fights anytime he sees a boom hero. Yeah, I mean, you said a minute ago this game flipped on its head. I, I didn't really, I didn't really click how much. Like looking at the graph now, it's yeah. <laughs> Mariana's trench there dipping so Ooh. fast down towards OG. Everything, yeah. experience, gold, win percentage. Now 72% favored for OG here over Boom in game two. Yeah, got up to like 74, 75% Boom favored and. 50% swing there on the win probability and boom are the ones on the back foot defending their base down 15k gold all of a sudden I mean, a big part of that is the Ag's Blessing of course but you know, that, it's, an, it's an item it, it's making OG stronger and OG themselves are not in any rush to try and break this high ground here I think recognizing that they've had their best fights off of some of their smoke plays fighting around their vision and don't just want to try and brute force down a lane yeah I like that from BZM TP's bot he sights one of the TP illusions, kills off the other with a meatball, deafening blast, and pushes out that bottom wave incredibly hard. And still has the boots to travel. You know, Octarine bots, he is everywhere on the map right now. Can rejoin this fight very quickly. And his top and mid both being cut from the Ancients area due to this Naga Siren with their illusions. And boom. Bunkered down in their base. And their high ground defense is still no joke with a uh, meta TB. And you, Page, on this last rack, having that shard and the split earth stacking can be a challenge to push high ground against. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, they're going to be hitting some level 25 soon. Last rack with a completed, like, Wind Waker, if he can get there, that's going to give him a way to save some of the, his teammates if they get initiated on or hexed up, Wind Crush. So there are tools that Boom have coming their way fairly soon. Not to mention multiple Aeon discs for some self saves. Uh, uh, Misha's got an Aghanim Scepter. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, yeah. I mean, piercing spell immunity is, is a huge factor here. We talked about it a little bit with the Ensnare, but now having Macropire with that song set up, having Ice Path and Crush. If someone gets caught here, they get scythed yep. into Chain Stun. They, they die. So it's... we have to start looking at buyback status. That's some serious damage output. And I think OG, yeah, just, you know, understanding like. You know, they may lose some one of their frontline cores, may get jumped off, but they want to make sure all these supports scale pretty well at the same time, so. It's going to be a tough, tough game as things kind of develop here. Yeah, I mean, OG going to know that there's two minutes still remaining on the cooldown of Lesh's buyback. I'm going to keep them hemmed in and keep the side lanes pushed, but it's boom to smoke, knowing that they need to do something drastic to... To get out of this funk they're in. FBZ and snared and silenced hexed and might just straight up die. He does, does have the Eon disc. Can't forget that with a roll up and the little cyclone from the Stormcrafter. But OG quickly moving forward to give chase. FBZ healed back by Scam and a very tight knit group here from Boom. All holding hands together and making sure when they fight, they fight as five. Yeah, so much of. The vision game is so important here, and it's OG who have got multiple wards spread around this boom base, not to mention all these Naga illusions that always can be sent out, not just to scalp, but to keep lanes pushed in, which makes it so much easier to know. Like, there's no, like, surprise factor when it comes to boom and where they are on the map. You're always going to know unless they smoke up. And if they smoke up, you're going to know they smoked up because you're pushing in all these lanes and no one's defending or no one's showing so it's just so tricky for boom to make them make any kind of a play outside of their base anymore that's an impossibility let's try and keep smoking ninja gear for tims move out slowly on the map see if that smoke breaks misha yuragi they're here 
and snare and silence pops the eon disc on to snap as well okay. but again boom all five together making sure that if there's a fight it's gonna be a big one i guess in and he's jumped forward tombstone's dropped song is there they're trying to focus down the tomb of skem and the wraith packed not gonna get taken down so those kids is just a zoning one as og come in and bail away as quickly as that. Well, bottom lane, BZM was split pushing. Does get jumped, but a good tornado EMP. We should be able to get out of this one safely. No further catch onto him. Even turning with the meatballs to make sure the boom cannot keep following him back towards that bottom lane. It was the metamorphosis used. There's no refresher, no Aghanim Scepter on this TP, so there's going to be a window here for OG. Yeah, they need to spend a lot to save him. They're still Force. split pushing too. This invoker just being a complete pesk in this bottom lane. Saying, okay, we can't win it. We can't go high ground and take a full on fight. Let's just push top and mid with four heroes while invoker keeps sending these forward spirits in down bottom. They have to deal with F uh, with BZM. Yeah. He is under OBS and Sentry right now. Yeah, I don't know if he realizes there's that ward scouting him out, but. We'll see if Boom find a way to punish this Invoker. Hey, look at Amar and Tiger, though. They're coming across, trying to stop the D-Ball from happening. And FBZ on disc again, buying him a little bit of time. And that Tornado missing gives him the opportunity to escape. Oh, gee, though, back in trouble. with the Ensnare Silence. Nagasara able to catch up to the Pango. And the focus from Tiger, the unleashed damage. It's enough to bring down FBZ. The turnaround from your patch. Dang, kills off Tiger, but the buybacks. Where's FBZ with his? Holding on to it for now. OG still strong here, standing their ground outside the Radiant base. And boom, they just fall back to high ground again, reclaim the gem, and reset. No panicking, keeping the, the Pengo buyback for now. Waiting to see if OG force any kind of a move here, so... They can get away with not using the buyback here, that's so important in late game Dota when you're looking at 50, 60 minutes in. These buybacks are one of the biggest things to kind of manage as a team. I mean, pretty much everyone has them. Everyone did have them until BZM decided to buy out his overwhelming blink. Uh, 100 gold isn't much to farm up, so yeah. in a few seconds, it will be all green light. Everyone with buybacks. We're going to have a 10v10 on our hands as Roshan is ready to be claimed and be fought around inside that pit. Yeah, curious to see if any of these heroes for go buybacks for any big items. Like, Leshrac could buy a Wind Waker, but it doesn't feel like it's a big enough, like, upgrade and, you know, your, your item set to be worth giving up buyback. For most of these cores, it's just, yeah, there's, there's no, like, rapier or anything that warrants getting bought. Roche died very quickly. Yep. Who's getting ages here? Amara's like, do I want this? I don't know. What's the plan here with Aegis? They're just... I mean this is... Tiger, yeah, there we go. All right. <laughs> Amar's just like, ah, you know, I'm, I'm six slotted. This Mask of Madness is too important. Uh, yeah, you got Mom AC MKB. He's the TB killer. Refresher Jakiro. Let's go. Double oh. Macro Pirate, double Ice Path. Hell yeah. This is where it's fun. To, these games as a support is so much fun. Like you're getting all these items you just never buy. You're getting your level 20, sometimes level, maybe even level 25 talents if it goes long enough. He's got a telescope. He's, he's happy with tier yeah. four items. Axe That's... and shard on Jakira. Like, <laughs> and with a refresher shard. That is nuts. Ah, BZM finds an illusion, kills it quickly. Tim's with his ninja gear causing a few issues. Just pushing out that bottom wave. Just never feels like Boom are the ones with the. Uh, I mean, they're gonna smoke now, but it never feels like they're the ones with the ability to jump, catch, kill, force a team fight that's gonna work out for them. OG have so many reset tools and kiting abilities. They see Amar on vision here, but he's very swift and just going from camp to camp. And they need like an insta stun from a rolling thunder from Pengo, so it's just so hard to actually catch him. And once again, it's BZM split pushing the bottom lane. He needs to be a little bit careful. He's going to reveal himself by using the meatballs here and may actually get caught out here. He's still hugging these trees. He hasn't left the bottom lane. Oh, they smoke to try and find him. They know where he is. Surely they'll see him. There we go. The BKB comes from BZM, though. Two-man tornado to get away. Skem's going to chuck the tombstone towards him, but he's already yep. blinked out of there. Yep. They, need, they oh, don't boom. have that insta stunner hex. Radiance top tower has fallen. And, and out. Yeah. Oh, just getting checked at. 
like Naga Illusions just keep chipping at these top buildings and yeah, Boom are going to have to hug their high ground once more. Yeah, it's not just the buybacks we've got here. OG have double cheese plus AD just swarming back. At. Like Naga Illusions just keep chipping at these top buildings and yeah, Boom are going to have to hug their high ground once more. Yeah, it's not just the buybacks we've got here. OG have double cheese plus Aegis. Rolling Thunder from FBZ, but Tiger unleashes. BKBs hits the buildings and runs back while the roll in. FBZ's not really got the backup though. Yo patches out of mana. TB walks forward, but they've got the Song of the Siren to set up. Two mana ice path. Macropire onto the big core heroes. Lash and Terror Blade, they've got to run away from this. Can't get stuck in all the fire and the spam damage. There's so much noise on the floor. TB's dying to Macropire. All the tornado clips him. He's down to like 300 HP. Still has BKB Satanic and the Sunder, but you're losing your buildings. Oh, that's so Ooh, great. They split Ooh. it. That was close. They were basically ferrying him into the fountain there, and they're not done. It's they just gone. jump left. He just deleted. Disappears. Double buyback now from Boom as Tiger does lose that Aegis. First life gone, but OG are just swarming over Boom right now. Yuragi gonna get away here with his own BKB, swapping Fair items enough. in and out. Doesn't have song for 20 seconds. God, good four staff. A bit of distance here, and Amanda tries to dodge away from the cookie, but in comes the TB and the Leshrac. The magic damage spilling onto the Naga and looking to kill her off. No way you're gonna get out of this one, Yuragi. But in comes BZM and Amar, crushing through onto them all. Timmons will have to buy back himself, while Terrorblade on the high ground, running back to Fountain. Boom spending a lot just to hold on to this game as OG have also bought back on Naga and Marcy. Yeah. Losing that top lane. I think OG committing these buybacks means it's maybe time to reconsider this push in this fight here. Some of these key BKBs on cooldown as well. Amar there at the end getting ping-ponged around by a rolling thunder, but luckily there wasn't any follow-up damage and OG has to, decides to back off to go defend this top lane and wait for it, their next good initiation. But this game, 55 minutes in, 33k gold lead, but... Are we getting 60 minute, minute items, Gareth? What do you think? Are we getting there? Yeah, yeah, we, we have to now. They, they've got us this far. We, we can't just close the game out without getting those tier five neutral items. All right. Let's see if, we've still got five minutes to go. I don't know if, we, like, Roshan is just not quite as big a deal anymore. Like your cords get all maxed out. Nobody really has room for an Aegis. Often having an Aegis doesn't actually make a difference in a team fight. It's more about just whoever gets a better initiation wins. Oh, Tiger. Initiation onto the Terror Blade. Cookie, Cookie, Lotus all back around the Dispose. And Jackie needs to get the Sunder off. Will do so. Onto Amar. That actually turns around and kills off Tiger now as well. Good kiss. All those saves. He's still dying to Macropire. Get out of the Macropire, Jackie. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, got to get himself out of that one with his Satanic. He will heal back up while Yuragi getting caught out by FBZ. Right, the Abyssal Blade Lotus all back onto the Naga Siren, but she turns with the Bloodthorn. Ooh. Shredding through the Pangolier and Tim as he honest does pop there. But BZM giving chase. He knows how low they are and a refresh up. Trying to catch with another tornado. Looking for Tim's the die back on the snap fire. A big kill for them on the Terra Blade as well. The mean ball and alacrity of the invoker of BZM gets them huge kills. And the buybacks from Boom require this takedown on the invoker. BZM has buyback. Get him down and out. OG could go for the killing blow here if they want to buy back on invoker. It's a you know a small risk to it, but. Boom are I mean, forcing this. He's gonna need it. Amar's in with a three-man stun. They've killed off your barge. No buyback, dead for two minutes, and Terra Blade just evaporates under the damage that OG bring. They've got every kill they needed it's now. Over. The buyback victory won by OG in this back and forth game. 57 minutes, we don't get to tier five items, but OG gonna come out with a two nil victory. Yeah. Just the way OG play late game with their team fighting and decision making is so impressive. Like two games in a row. This time around, they didn't have the better late game lamp necessarily. They definitely, I mean, it was it was slightly better, but it wasn't like this. Okay, we go late game, we win Dota. Like they actually had to outplay Boom here. These last fights, they're sending in all these heroes that have buyback. Like they know, like a Mar kind of commits hard bits because he has buyback, and then it's BZM's turn. He's the only core left with buyback.